Okay, so uh, I've been very uh, obsessively, uh, obsessively uh, following this Ukraine uh, war situation. So I'm going to, uh, based on all the videos I've seen, the um, I have I have a Telegram channel. <laughs> That's a, very, that's a very good source of information. So, uh, for all the information I've consumed so far, I am uh, go. I'll try and sort of uh, put my thoughts on what I think. Of, uh, my 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 summary of the Ukraine. Situation. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> from what I gather, I think the um, position. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll t I guess I would say. Let me just say it. Ukraine belongs to Russia. So this is the uh, thesis. So this is the um, this is the uh, statement that um, <clears throat> so if someone asks me why is there a war or a special military operation in Ukraine, I will say my response to that question would be this: Ukraine belongs to Russia. Ukraine belongs to Russia. And that's the reason why there is this conflict going on right now. Um, so that's what I would say, all right? So if someone asks me, hey, why do you think is this, is, this conflict is there? That's the answer I would give them, uh, right? But now let's uh, try and <laughs> talk about some more uh, stuff. And I don't think uh, this information is probably going to be very disjointed or whatever. Um, let this be some some kind of like a, you know, just thoughts. Uh, coming to my mind anyway. So um, I support Russia. <laughs> I support Russia. Uh, Russia is the good guy. Russia is the good guy. Uh, and the West, the West uh, especially U.S. United States. Oh, I feel scared writing this. I feel like someone is going to get me because all the sense the censorship is the bad guy. Uh oh, I, I feel really scared writing that. I feel like, oh man, I just feel scared saying something like that because it's like going against the grain and. I'm afraid making that statement actually. I am afraid making this statement because I feel like some secret service agency is going to come and kidnap me. <laughs> I mean that's how insane this, this situation has become. You can't even say anything positive about Russia. If you say that you're like a evil person you're you're like <laughs> anyway so why do i think russia is a good guy because russia is fighting uh russia is fighting uh the global liberal hegemony uh, 
Well, yeah, so Wacha is standing up to the West and to its so called democracy and. Um, no. I am for a multi polar. Multi polar world. So you have uh, several spheres. I think someone you, you can. Um, I've read a bit, a little bit about this Alexander. I think his works is sort of uh, if you search for him and I did order a book of his. <laughs> I hope I can. Anyway, forget my ordering of the books. It's more important that you read the book than actually having the book. Um, so he talks about um, this is unipolar versus multipolar world. So that's basically like instead of the U.S. being the only superpower or on the only leading whatever you know the U.S. like you can have different uh, powers of influence. So you can have China, you can have Russia, you can have the U.S. You can even have like India or you can have like uh, Iran. You can have all these different countries in the world who can equally. Um, have uh, something to say, you know, a voice in uh, geopolitics. Well, that's another thing, like geopolitics. I, uh, this is something I... Oh, geopolitics. Uh, oh, that's actually a thing. It's like, um, I, n I never really uh, considered this term, but it's like geography, geo, and politics. So, uh, Apparently it's like some guy called Mackinder, which Dugan references. Uh, he, he's sort of like the father of geopolitics, geopolitics, and he talks about the sea civilization and land civilization and how Russia is part of the land civilization and the Britain and, and some of the Western Europe are part of the sea civilization and there's like this conflict. Uh, I mean, I, I'm only picking up, I'm picking up little bits and pieces here. I'm, I don't really, um, like, I haven't really uh, studied this subject, but I'm just, I'm just skimming bits of information. Um, so, all right, now, like I said, this, this, I'm just gonna, uh, you know, like, move on from one subject to another. So, Ukraine, uh, So why, okay, Ukraine has a problem, one problem, Ukraine's problem is this, right? Does not have a good leadership, uh, does not know how to be a state or country, um, more than a state, does not know how to, does not have an identity as an independent state an identity as an independent state um, this allows Ukraine to be vulnerable to exploitation by external actors so, uh, so because of this uh, view, uh, uh, I don't want to defend this view. Let me just say something that follows from this. So, Ukraine can, can be controlled by the West, especially U.S., or it can be controlled by Russia. All right. I believe. It is in Ukraine's best interests. Best interests are served by aligning with Russia. Yeah, so this is what I, I think. This is this is what I do. Okay, the way I would uh, uh, present this is like Ukraine is like this. Ukraine is like this. Uh, 
confused is like a confused child uh, you know does not know who who they are or whatever and trying to find its way in the world and because it's so like new or confused it doesn't ha it doesn't have a strong foundation uh, like the US and the West came in and then uh, like uh, so the, the 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 West came in to like predate on Ukraine so try to take the, the West tried to take advantage of this you know, this very young kind of country or state and um, so you know they you know the coup <laughs> the alleged coup in 2014 uh, you know installing the you know, try installing a Western uh, aligned regime. See, how do I say this? And and the way Russia uh, is like uh, is like uh, Ukraine's uh, mother. Okay. <laughs> And because Russia knows Ukraine, Russia, I think you know Ukraine has been part of Russia historically, or as far as I understand it. Um, but there has been this kind of tension between you know Ukraine. You got ethnic Ukrainians on the west, and you got um, ethnic Russians in the east. And okay, Russia is like Ukraine's mother. Russia is looking at uh, is looking at this exploitation. Uh, of uh, Ukraine by the West, all right, and, uh, and then when the when the West said, okay, you can join NATO, and and you can, you know, when the West tried to, to arm Ukraine, uh, I think in the hopes of uh, destroying Russia. Uh, I think that was a girl. I'm not really. I don't really care much about this part anyway. Um, so Russia uh, uh, actually cares about Ukraine. Ukraine. Russia is like Ukraine. Russia is <laughs> like Ukraine's mom, and. And what Russia is doing now is uh, trying to Russia is trying to protect Ukraine from the Western predators <laughs> uh, uh, who don't really care about Ukraine. Let's just leave it at that instead of talking about the Ukraine people. Um, so Russia is like uh, Russia is attempting to uh, to cover Ukraine using its uh, wings uh, 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 like a bird uh, from the. Um, predatory eyes uh, of the West. Cynical. Cynical West. Cynical West. Okay. Um. <laughs> so, I think the, the Russia actually cares about Ukraine, you know. Uh, um, so, Ukraine <sighs> needs protection from the Russia even though Ukraine, Ukraine doesn't realize this because I think they've been sort of brainwashed or by the West or they've been um, I don't know I mean th there's no such thing as no such thing as freedom uh, Someone, uh, someone said something like this. I, I saw, I heard this in the video. What does freedom mean? Uh, you know, like what does it mean? Anyway, um, this is my view, right? 
You know how people say, oh, Russia, there's no f f freedoms and things like that. Well, I will, I, my, I will tell you what, what's going on. The population needs to be controlled. In fact, it is always being, being controlled. So I guess the question is, who is doing the controlling? When, uh, for instance, when there were these protests in Russia and they, they clamped down on the protests, the reason I think that's a good thing uh, is because you, get, you see, you, get, you got the CIA <laughs> and this, you know, I, or you get these um, paid actors or, uh, you know, these agitators, you know, these uh, agi agitators. And they won't, they'll go into a country and they will try to instigate uh, instigate um, protests and riots and hopefully it will turn to riots against against the uh, the government to uh, you know to overthrow government. So so you know by cracking down on these protest right when they start you're, you're you're preventing the protests get from getting out of hand and then end up being you know where you have to use violence against them so by just by stopping it right at the beginning you prevent the um, having to use force later on so i think that's a good thing um now i mean protesting i mean like I guess you have to distinguish organic protests from protests which are like instigated by you know outside actors you know because um yeah i feel like <laughs> even though this sounds conspiratorial i think it's it's very reasonable to conclude that foreign actors can sort of promote unrest in countries if they want to you know overthrow the, <laughs> the regime so this is my response to people who say oh putin get down on protest uh no i think um well look at the censorship going on in the uh west where you can't say anything positive about russia access to russian media is blocked okay i'm tired now um so yeah so russia good <laughs> good Oh, Russia good, uh, West bad, uh, uh, Russia is uh, attempting to protect, attempting to protect Ukraine. Well, I think Russia will protect Ukraine. Hopefully. Oh, I don't know about that. Hopefully, uh, new new geopolitical. Well, I think this is a good thing. Well, um, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> to the new geo, geopolitical landscape. <sighs> okay, I think I'm just saying I'm tired.